Harry, what are you doing? Dude, he's not working. Use your mouse. Okay. Harry! <laughs> oh. Two, two, two meta is upon us. So coming off the break, you know, we entered in practice knowing that the meta was changing to two, two, two. I mean, with any kind of meta shift this big, scrim draw is gonna be really crazy and really hectic. Um, every team's gonna be trying new things, things that they've theorized, what, what could be good. Since it's like the start of a whole new meta and it's pretty much just an entirely new game, everybody that's practicing is playing a bunch of random stuff. So it's just like 100,000 different comps out there. So it's like, you just don't know what people are gonna do. With scrims being so wild, sometimes you know you, you face a team twice, and one time it's really one side this way, the other time it's really one side the other way. So you know it's really all over the place, and you only have very limited scouting information for what the enemy team's going to do. Actually preparing for London and figuring out what we expected them to do is really rough, but I think we like we had a good idea and like, goals we wanted to achieve while we were practicing, so we had like a pretty set idea. It was pretty nice being able to like actually, you know, play characters that I enjoy playing, but finding that happy balance of like which characters to play was the one thing that's like a bit confusing. You have to kind of play a balance game where it's, are we focusing mostly on testing new compositions or are we working on things that are specific to teamwork or are we trying to, you know, make one specific composition better? So that first, you know, week and a half, two weeks of scrims is all about you know, just trying to get a foothold and, and, and balance everything properly. OG, what? Did you hear Shanghai one? Yes, Sh but who cares? I don't care. It's not ours. Especially on stage, if you're in a matchup and you're just dominating the other widow, like, just f***ing kill them. That's all it takes. Like, if, if, if you guys are feeling yourself, like, on stage, especially, like, use that momentum. As long Overall, we feel like we can be a really strong team this stage. So as of right now, we're at a point where we currently are in the top 12, which means we're in contention for the play-ins to the playoffs. And so right now we're sitting in right around that 11th, 12th place. So really what we need to do is we want to make sure we clinch at least three wins this stage, um, ideally four or five, and that'll basically guarantee us a spot at minimum the play-ins. So that, that's what we're aiming for. Today? I am. I am. I'm pretty ready. I'm not going to miss a single shot today. You are, I am. I'm not going to miss a single shot all game. You're not going to miss? No, I never miss. I have not missed a single shot in the Overwatch League, ever. It's true. It's true. We don't, we don't, man. We don't, man. Summer recall. Going into that match, we felt really good. We knew what we were doing. We had our comps set up. There were a couple like tweaks we wanted to make, but we didn't really have too much time and that was like a little bit of a factor on like a map or two. But like overall, we felt pretty good going into the London match. Our, our warm up went pretty well and we were pretty confident at the arena. We know that we had a really good shot at, at taking London down. London has previously done really well in this kind of meta. And so we knew that they'd be a very strong opponent. We knew that th this match could go either way. You know, we, we wanted to go in there and do our best and, and we felt like we, d we definitely had a shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. All right, hey, listen up. Stage four. This is our chance to change the narrative, okay? This is our chance to show everyone what we can do. So we're gonna burn blue on three, all right? One, two, three. Burn blue! London, Spitfire, taking on the Dallas field. Should be an interesting one, actually. London, of course, uh, kind of up and down a little bit this season, but both of these teams should benefit a bit from the change to two. So it's time, guys, to get this match started. Let's hear it for our first team. It's the Dallas Fuel. They're just holding it. I mean, what can you say? Birdring? But they pick up the Zachary and Dallas Fuel having a really hard time even getting close to the point right now. They are going to have to fight this six for... It's going to be a three, six versus five, but Time is going to get picked off. I mean, when the Widow 1v1 finally happens, it comes in and nobody can even get to the point. Great hook by Fury at the end. Lightning gun. May Walt, or May uh, Rock, rather. Blocking big gesture down already, though. And Zachary coming in for the Reaper cleanup, and 
Looks like Dallas might be able to flip this. They will. Yeah. Can they finish off the fight? Tie things up here in Ilios. Gesture down as well. It's looking good for Dallas Fuel. Zach be getting back to that back anytime soon. And that is going to be Dallas tying us up. And there's a Dragon Strike. Just going to try to push Dallas onto the point here. Push them back. Taimu, meanwhile, gets two, gets three. Taimu. Taimu popping off right now. We'll see. All right, Dragon Strike coming through. Unko gets Gesture with the Bio Grenade. Big start for Dallas. And that's a better start. They got the 60. Nice, nice, nice. Dallas Fuel will come back and win Ilios. Ilios, I think, is the one map that we felt probably the best on. You know, we came out pretty strong and Ed felt really good about it. It was a big win. We go into the map, a lot of momentum. Just make, make sure we don't get too too far ahead of ourselves, all right? Our combos, we need to make sure like they're good. Yep, just make sure we think about it, okay? Oh. So Dallas Fuel on the attack first. You're on Tanamura. I don't know, it's gonna be tough. Dallas Fuel nearly out of time right now, but Prophet's down. They're hanging in there. A kill on the Fury. Can they finish it off? It looks like they can barely get point A done. The EMP hits three people with that. There's a hook though on the Unko, and Fury comes in from behind. And what can you do? That's right. <laughs> the at the end. That's going to be a solid defensive round for London. Oh, and then, then sometimes you just click heads. That's what happens. Unfortunately, they were playing like an Orisa Widow call up with May. So. Birdring just peeked and instantly headshot me and then like instantly headshot two other people. So we kind of just lost the first point in 25 seconds. So that part was really not not great. Have to do that eventually. There we go. Unko down. Red's coming through, but meanwhile, while Closer gets the res on the Unko, OG drops and that is the end of the map. We kind of felt like that one wasn't necessarily like a strategy thing, but we played kind of poorly. Um, we had some mispositionings that they, they were able to exploit. So. so as everyone came together for halftime, you know, we had kind of a big talk about King's Row. Nobody was really like down or thought we were out of the series. Everybody was still pretty positive and we were all trying to figure out ways to tweak our comp for King's Row and everybody was pretty much just pushing to make sure that we could find that edge to actually compete and win King's Row and take the rest of the series. King's Row is going to be our next map to see who takes the lead in this series. They able to use the transcendence after AKMT and PK came in. And now London pushing back, they lose Jester and Note gets the 2K with the self-destruct. Dallas Field is gonna start pushing again. No trying to be sneaky on the payload, but that is where the push will end, and that is where the map will end as well. London Spitfire takes the lead in the series. Drill can't be healed by the Mercy in the end. Closer has to go for the res on the Unko instead, and now Prophet just trying to push this one through, but London can't seem to find enough kills to do it, and Dallas holds. As Zachary and No coming up big in that last fight. But on that Genji, No gets the kill anyway, but it's only the tanks on the payload, and there's only so much you can do, and Dallas Fuel, a bright spot, but it's gonna be London Spitfire in the end, taking the series. I think overall London played a very, very aggressive style and then did very, very well with it. And I think that kind of shows just how uh, good they are in, in this type of meta because they've been here before and they've, you know, competed on the, on the world stage with it um, and won. So, you know, I think London uh, is going to be a, a big force uh, in this meta in general. Overall, I think Today was a good learning, uh, learning experience. A lot that we can take away, and things we can improve on for next week. Okay, you know, make make sure you watch this match. You know, th think through a lot of the stuff that you know maybe we got outplayed on, or, or they did something different, whatever. Um, we can learn from it, and we can adapt for it. Okay, so um, GG's today. Don't sweat it. Just chill, and then just get your stuff ready for next week. All right, GG's today. Losing the match the way we did, we weren't really devastated by any means. You know, we actually felt like this was genuinely one of those losses where we actually learned a lot about, you know, where our shortcomings are and some of the other strengths that, you know, we, we need to work on. And we feel like about really valuable data from this one. In general, with any kind of loss, you want to learn as much as you can from it. Um, but this one really felt like, you know, because it's the, the first match of a new meta, like we, it really opened our eyes to some of the areas we want to put more emphasis on. Yeah, I think this game was actually a really good learning experience because 
not only did like we take maps off of the team that was the like undisputed best at this type of comp in the 2018 season, we were, like, pretty much pushed them to the edge and almost brought it to a map five and then who knows where it would have went. I think everybody on the team is doing a really good job of performing and adapting to the new 222 meta. Going forward in the rest of stage four and possibly in playoffs, I believe that we do have a really good chance and everybody has been putting a lot in to improving and figuring out the like optimal play styles for this meta. So I think we have a good shot going the rest of stage four. We feel pretty good about how we can go in the next week and some of the things we want to work on going into the next week and the next match. And we feel like we actually can really have a good stage here. And if we have a good stage, it means that we can get into the season playoffs um, or at least the play-ins. And that's, you know, that's what we're aiming for. So as we were coming back from our break, um, you know, Jane brought up that he was having a really tough time um, dealing with a lot of the the attitude on social media. I think that, you know, when you're in the public eye, you have, you know, a lot of fans and you have a lot of people that, that will always just try to get a rise out of you for some reason. Um, and I think Jaden was at a point where he it was having a, a big impact on his mentality. And he was at a point where he needed to stop and take some time to try to deal with it. And, you know, we felt like that was a, a good idea. Mental health is extremely important. And with a job like this, there's a lot of pressure, especially when you're also, you know, a streamer in the background that Jane came from, you know, he has a lot of people looking to him. And I know that that pressure uh, is, is a pretty hard thing to deal with sometimes. We take that very seriously, where if we feel like someone is, uh, you know, needs to take some time off for their mental health, we absolutely want to give them that and, and you know, make sure that they're okay. Mental health always comes first. And we've done that for players in the past. It's no different with staff. For everyone out there that was concerned about Jane, you know, he's fine. He's he's already back working, um, and and you know, we're we're making sure that his mental health and everyone's mental health is top priority. So we're feeling good.